Whatever the word of God said is true. And so if God said it, if it happened then, there must be a way for me to experience this today. And I remember when I was 17 years old, I went to this Pentecostal church and they were praising God. And I never experienced the worship like that. And, and it's very similar to what we experience today. Wasn't the worship amazing today? The Lord. Hallelujah. Deliverance and healing already. I believe God is already healing people just through the worship. And I went there and I started to praise God and I found myself on the other side of the worship. I just got into the spirit and, and I began to speak in tongues and this was all new to me and I, and, I, and I was dancing and I never used to dance inside of a church. And, and when the worship was done, I looked over and like my seat was all the way on the other side. How did I get here? My eyes were closed. And God did a miracle in my life. Ever since then, I've been experiencing the supernatural day in and day out. Not all the time. But I've seen the Lord work through me in the area of words of knowledge. I've seen the Lord work through me in the areas of prophecy. I've seen the Lord work through me in the area of healing and deliverance. I've seen him work in supernatural, in dreams. And it's amazing. It's amazing to feel the presence of God. It's amazing to know that the words that we see in the Bible are real. And that God can take simple things and broken things to do something miraculous. So I want to bring you through a few texts here. Number one, in chapter four, we see right below, right below, just a few verses down, there was a man with an unclean spirit in verses 33. And it says, in the synagogue, there was a man with an unclean spirit, an unclean demon. And he looked at Jesus and said, what have we to do with you? And notice what it says in verses 35. It says, Jesus rebuked him. It said, be quiet and come out. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. This is one miracle we see right after he proclaimed that word. And that was proof that he was the man who he said he was. In verses 38, we see another miracle. Peter's mother, Peter's wife's mother lay sick of a high fever. And they made a request of him concerning her. And he stood over her and he rebuked the fever. And notice what it says again. And it left her. And it left her. Going on again in verses 40, it says that all those who were sick with various diseases were brought to Jesus. And look what he did. He laid his hands on them, on every one of them, and healed them. And demons also came out crying and saying, you are the Christ, the Son of God. I'm going to go on and let you see what Jesus is doing in chapter 5 verses 12 we see that there was a man who was a, a leper and he went to Jesus and he said Lord if you're willing you can make me clean in verses 13 he said that he put out his hand and touched him saying I am willing be cleansed immediately the leprosy left him hallelujah somebody should be praising the Lord hallelujah it goes on in verse 15, and multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. It goes on, and I'm going to read a little more so you can see that the power of the Lord, the demonstration of his power is or was with Jesus. It says here later on in a few verses down, and we're going into chapter 6. Verses 6, it says, Now it happened on another Sabbath that he entered the synagogue, and a man was there whose right hand was withered. So the scribes and the Pharisees watched closely whether he would heal them. He knew their thoughts, and he said, Arise and stand here. And he arose and stood. And we say in verses 10, and when he looked at all around and he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored. 
Now I'll close with one more verse here in verses 18, or rather verses 17. It says, and he came down with them and stood on a level place with the crowd who came to him to hear as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits and they were healed. The whole multitude sought to touch him for power went out from him and healed them all. Somebody turned to their neighbor and say, and he healed them all. And he healed them all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to understand something here today is that Jesus Christ didn't want you to ever know or feel that when he leaves, that he's not going to still be there for you. He wants you to know today that when he left and went up to heaven, that he is going to continue to do what he started to do in the church and in the world. He says that in John chapter 15, he says that the comforter is going to convict of sin, righteousness, and judgment. He's going to continue to convict. And it also says that these signs shall follow them that believe. He also says that greater things than these shall you do if you believe. And so what I need you to understand here today is that the spirit of the Lord was upon Jesus, but he gave his disciples the power of the Lord. He said... Wait until you receive power from on high and you will be my witnesses, witnesses of his power, witnesses of his person, witness of his grace in your life. God wants to give you grace today and not tomorrow he wants to give you grace today. He wants you to experience him today. He wants you to know that he's strong today. He doesn't want anyone in this room to continue to walk with demons and a, and a frown face and, 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 and sicknesses lingering and lingering and lingering. This is the work of the enemy. And I know this because every time somebody wanted healings from Jesus, Jesus somehow did it. And if Jesus did it, then he can do it today. Amen. 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 And some of you still don't have the faith right now. I'm going to say it again. If Jesus did it, then he can do it today. Can I get an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. What sickness did we see here that Jesus wasn't able to deliver? He delivered people of demons. He delivered people of withered hands. He delivered people from uh, not being able to walk. He delivered people from leprosy, skin disease. There's a lot of skin diseases going on around here today. There's a lot of people that are paralyzed, even, even mentally paralyzed, spiritually paralyzed today. And just like one of the testimonies that I heard from a brother here, he said that he opened up the door in his life to some kind of spirit that caused him to have the wrong desires. You need to understand that there is a spiritual realm that you can't see. And this spiritual realm has demonic figures and fallen angels that are sent to occupy your life, your territory, and to take what God wants you to use for his glory. That's why we see talented musicians like Beyonce and Michael Jackson, who's now dead, that were so, so gifted and so anointed in their area, but their gift was being used of the enemy, and that stifled them from the blessings of God. And some of you have gifts and talents, but you can't seem to go forward with God. You can't seem to, to experience the power of God because you're in bondage by some uh, spiritual force, whether a fallen angel or a demonic presence, because you've opened up a door in your life. We're going to shut some of these doors today. Amen. We're going to see what the Lord is going to do in your life. And I want to share with you a couple doors that need to be shut. And I brought with you a text uh, just it's going to make it easy for me because uh, we have a course about this that, that helps people to overcome their demonic strongholds. Number one, occultic doorways. Any person that has grown up in a religion that was not a born-again faith, whether it's Islam, Hinduism, even Roman Catholic backgrounds, and it's no offense to those who are Roman Catholic or Orthodox in this room today, I'm simply saying that because some of the practices that they do in some churches are not biblical. People are offering people up to uh, saints that are dead or angels uh, that they have not seen or spoken to or and, and where the text of the word of God says not to do anyway, but yet they're offering up to the, these entities and they're putting statues and necklaces around them 
This is entering into the occult. People have people have opened up the doors of the Ouija board and and, and gone to voodoo uh, high priests and 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 obia and other black magic and witchcraft throughout the world. Not just in Africa, but in Spain and and and, and gypsy mm -hmm. backgrounds where they've opened up the occult. Listen, that will affect your spiritual life. It will hinder your walk with the Lord. It will not allow you to be in the places that God wants you to be. That's a doorway of the enemy. And those doorways, hallelujah, those doorways bring problems in your life. Cultic doorways, sacrifices. How many of you have had an occultic past? Just, just raise up your hands. A lot of you, okay. Cultic doorways is when we when we um, join some kind of spiritual group that is not of the Lord, these cultic doorways open up the door to demonic forces, re reoccurring nightmares, blockages in your finances, blockages in your relationships. And some of you have these, these, uh, these symptoms already. Emotional doorways, relationships that you shouldn't have been in, caused trauma in your lives, and now you're, you're, you, you have a seed inside of you, a, a block in your heart, a pain in your heart that you can't seem to overcome. You've had encounters in your dreams with wicked spirits. You've had an, an inheritance from things. Uh, uh, your, your parents were uh, drunkards and now you're struggling with drunkenness. You, 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 your parents were struggling with sexual things or uh, divorce and now you're struggling with divorce. These are inheritance doorways, things that need to be shut in your life. Soul tie doorways, media doorways. Things that you're bringing into your mind, membership doorways, you're belonging to the wrong groups, Freemasonry, you cannot be a Christian and be a Freemason at the same time. Illuminati and all those other groups out there that, that you think, or even, even university uh, 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 memberships with these uh, fraternities, you have to know that these are opening up doorways to the enemy. Every group and club and and, and spirituality has a spirit ruling over it. And so if you're going to a church that doesn't have the Holy Spirit or doesn't believe in the Holy Spirit, you're under a curse. You've opened up a doorway to a foul spirit. Any group, any Christian group that is teaching that God's spirit is not for today, that means the spirit in that church is a demon. I got to say it to you because if it's not the spirit of God, then what is it? Mm. The Spirit of God is never going to deny himself. I don't care how well-spoken John MacArthur is or how well-spoken your pastor is. If he is not demonstrating the power of the Holy Spirit and if he's denying the move of God inside the church, the Spirit in that church cannot be the Holy Ghost. It can't be. Because God is not an author of confusion. It's either the Spirit of the Lord is for today or it's not. He's not going to teach two different things for confusing the people of God. Addiction doorways, drugs, and alcohol. These are some doorways that lead to the, the accuser of the brethren occupying your life. And so you need to understand that this, these people that came to Jesus knew that something was wrong in their lives. And so what they did is they came for deliverance. They came for healing. They came to, to be set free of their bondage. Now, if the Spirit of the Lord is here, that means there's freedom that's here in this room. Amen. There's freedom that is in this room. And God wants to set some people free today. He wants you to know that if you would open up the door to him, just like you open up the door to the enemy, that you're going to experience something as well, but this time it's going to be freedom liberation and salvation hallelujah Amen. hallelujah god is good you need to understand that the spirit of the lord is here today hallelujah Amen. god is good he needs anointed the people of god to bring healing to the brokenhearted this is where it all begins so wherever you are today i don't know who you are and what your problems are but one thing i do know is that I serve a God that can deliver you from all of your problems. 
I serve a God that can fill you and give you grace again, that can restore your soul again, that can lift you up and make you whole. I serve a living God in this place. And his spirit is upon me as it is upon the leaders of this ministry. I want to share something with you. Being a Christian does not mean that everything is going to go okay. You're going to have moments of persecution. But that doesn't mean that the spirit of the Lord is upon you. You might be struggling with something today, but that doesn't mean that God has given up on you. It simply means that we're walking and passing through a journey, a stage that one day will soon be over. So don't be discouraged today if you accepted Christ a few years ago and you're still wrestling. God is going to set you free sooner or later. Amen? He's going to set you free. That's a promise. I was recently go going, I, I recently got arrested, as many of you know, and I recently lost our building, as many of you know, and I recently, uh, you know, uh, have, have been attacked so strongly by so many different angles because of what I do and what I preach. What is it that I preach that's, that's, that's strange? Well, I, I preach salvation. The first persecution I got when I was casting out demons many years ago, almost 10 years ago, I put it up online and then I had a lot of people that don't believe in the gifts of the spirit accusing me of, of witchcraft, accusing me of all sorts of things because they never experienced the power of God. I'm not a witchcraft worker. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. Seems like we have more faith in witchcraft workers today than we have in Jesus. But Jesus says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So whatever fear you have of the witchcraft worker, God's power is greater than the witchcraft worker. So that means no matter what demonic presence is in this room today, God's power is greater than even that. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. The God that I serve is greater than your depression. He's greater than your addiction. He's greater than your sickness. So I got persecuted then, and, and I keep getting persecuted. It seems like the more that I stretch my faith is the more I get persecuted. And that's exactly what Jesus said. He said that you'll receive peace and blessings with persecution. So many of you are in bondage today. Many of you. But you need to understand that once you get free, there's going to be a persecution against you from the enemy. Why? Because your life is now a vessel of the Lord. So there's a trade. If you want the freedom of the Lord, you will be free. But know that you're going to be enemy number one in the eyes of the devil. The devil doesn't like losing his territory. And some of you came from families where for generations you've, you've been a territory of the devil. And you're just looking back and you see all of these, the same problems generation after generation. So I need to warn you because scripture says that when a, when a demon leaves, it's going to try to come back seven times stronger. And so this is, I remember a mentor of mine told me this one thing. That's why it's important that whenever you do deliverances, that the people in the room accept Jesus Christ because these demons want to go somewhere. And I've seen it in one particular mass deliverance in my, in my church where people didn't take that seriously. And this one lady was being delivered of demons and all of a sudden it was almost at the same time she reacts, somebody else reacted in the back because they weren't covered by the blood. Demons want to go somewhere. They want to occupy stuff. And when, when you get delivered, they want, to, they want to get that place back. Because you see, when you get delivered and the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, God is going to use you to, to deliver many other people. That's a threat to the enemy. So you need to make sure that you are born again that you accept Jesus Christ and that you are ready, covered, ready to get into the word, ready to make a commitment to Jesus Christ. 
So the first step is you need to accept Jesus. Second step, you need to be baptized, immerse yourself, clothe yourself with Jesus. And third, you need to connect yourself with the body of Christ. There's too many Lone Ranger Christians just walking around and saying, I'm a Christian. I don't, everywhere's corrupt, but, but you're not corrupt. And everybody's false, but you're not false. Elijah felt the same thing, but he's, but God had to open his eyes and said, there's about 7,000 more. And I look around here, there's a lot of people that love God here. This is a, this is a fellowship that you can get involved in if it's nearby, if it's something. And, and when I say nearby, we have people in our fellowship that travel two hours every week to come to our service. Because it's not about distance. When I was young, I used to travel two, two hours to another service. But I'm not trying to... If you have a church you go to and it's a Holy Ghost filled church, wonderful. Connect there, get involved, be discipled. But if you don't, you need to make a commitment. So I'm going to ask everybody to close their eyes. We're going to get right into some ministry time.